Periodicity, or the characteristic of a certain property repeating itself in a regular way, is arguably the most fundamental characteristic of our universe, from the movement of the smallest subatomic particles through to rotation of giant galaxies, things are repeating themselves. And personally, I'm very glad that they do, because that is what music is made of. <laughs> So this is the first in a series of videos I'll be doing about the nature of music, getting really into the weeds of what music is really made of, from frequencies and notes through to harmony, scales and modes, resonance, intonation, rhythm and so on. But to begin, I need to introduce you to the simplest form of oscillation possible, and that is a sine wave or a sinusoid. The reason it's called a sinusoid is actually a dodgy translation from Sanskrit into Latin via Arabic, but we're stuck with it now. And it's the simplest possible form of oscillation because it's derived from the simplest possible shape, and that is a circle. It's actually what a point rotating on a circle looks like when you see it from the side. And the only things you can really change in a sine wave are its amplitude, how high and low it goes, and its frequency, how spread out or bunched up it might be. And even those don't really mean much until you start comparing one wave with another, and then you can say that one is bigger than the other, or more bunched up or spread out than the other. And then when you have two, you can actually compare something else, which is the phase, which I'll get into in a later video. One thing that's really useful to do is count how many oscillations of one wave there might be compared to another. In this example, the first wave has two oscillations where the second wave has one. So to make all this comparison easier, we've started using some cycles that occur in nature as a standard reference. And in fact, that's how you define a second. So you might think of a second as just being a length of time, but in fact, it's defined based on cycles. It was originally defined based on the rotation of the Earth in 24 hours. That was too tricky to measure and it varied too much. So then we used the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. In fact, it was the year 1900 that they used specifically, but again, it wasn't accurate enough to be a very useful measurement. So now we define one second based on counting the number of cycles of light emitted from a cesium atom. So my point is, one second is a completely arbitrary length of time. It's really only useful to compare one thing that happens in time to another. And it's just a lot easier to say, this happened in one second, than it is to say, this happened in 9,192,631,770 cycles of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. So now that we have our reference, we can count the number of cycles of a wave in one second, and that is defined as its frequency in hertz. And it's important to remember that the number doesn't mean anything, so whole numbers aren't more important than fractions. One number isn't more special than another number. Humanity's tendency to assign special meaning to certain numbers or certain values really doesn't mean anything when you're using such an arbitrary time scale in the first place to measure it in. But it's still a useful thing. So you could have a wave at 50 hertz and a wave at 80 hertz and quickly get some intuition about how you could compare the two of them. So sound, any sound, can be described as a whole bunch of different sine waves with different frequencies and amplitudes and phases all added together. And this is most obvious in music, where the sine waves that you're adding together have some form of simple mathematical relationship to one another. At least they approximate those simple mathematical relationships. Exactly how and why you can decompose any sound into sine waves is beyond the scope of this first video, but I'll be covering the essentials in a later episode in this series. So with sound, a single sine wave is a very simple version of a musical note. And the characteristics of a sine wave, its amplitude and its frequency, correspond to that note's volume or its pitch. In the next video, I'll be covering resonance and why things like guitar strings and flutes and wine glasses all make musical notes and why they sound different from each other, even if they're making the same note. That's all for now. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with all the music nerds in your friend circles. As always, a big thanks to my supporters over on Patreon, and this week a big shout out to Nick Laycock, who has just joined 
at the backstage pass level. Nick, your contribution has gone towards about 33 trillion cesium ground state oscillations spent learning how to animate sine waves in GeoGebra. And if you'd like to join a growing community of music nerds and music lovers, then head over to Patreon. The link is in the description. And to all of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.